uh, SMB, a person with a high age commission agent. So we know every IFA is a commission agent here. Can't get along easily and they have to plan a shadow banking or a money lender's work. And as we save money, we literally don't get any return. In Hong Kong, all your money which is lying in the bank today is earning you zero percent and the inflation rate is three and a half. And then you think you're diversified portfolio, but literally you bought two products, equity and bonds, right? Even your MPF, if you're putting MPF money aside, that's going back to equity and bonds, right? And, and that necessarily is not a good thing. So we are trying to see how we can bring this together in Hong Kong. Uh, surely in China it's become very big, it's become very big in US and uh, UK. Uh, again, you will see a lot of things which I talk today evening will be resonating about what Fritz has spoken about, Asanya has spoken about, very similar experience. So very consistent view will come out. And this is what our track record has been. Move fast, make minimum value program or MVP, fail fast, fail forward. But that's the only way to learn. A PowerPoint will not teach you anything. Uh, sitting in an incubation in a conference room will not teach you anything. Uh, it's just a way to go out in the market, talk to people, and if you have a product, then only you will learn that consumers like it or don't like it. First of all, uh, now coming to you all, congratulations. You're 2% of the world population. You're embracing something unknown. Right? Entrepreneurship is a journey where you embrace completely unknown. I thought I knew everything about banking. I knew how to distribute products, but take off the city bank name from my life. Nobody knows me. So believe that you're going to create something. Believe in yourself. A lot of people will tell you, and specifically your colleagues who you're left behind, this is stupid. But if you believe in yourself, keep going. Keep going. Only you can know your passion. Nobody else will appreciate that. The first question to ask, where to incorporate? There are lots of factors. Like in Hong Kong, you incorporate a company, very easy, two days. Maximum 50 shareholders. So when you're raising money, you need to know that 50. A lot of legal guys will tell you to incorporate your company in PBI, XYZ. Don't waste your money initially. It's not worth taking that money, uh, specifically your money, to incorporate a PBI <coughs> company and then a supporting company. Keep the structure as simple as possible. And specifically, if you incorporate in Hong Kong, going back again to the slides, getting to Cyberport, getting to other companies which are giving grants in Hong Kong, will only happen if you're incorporated in Hong Kong. If you're incorporated in Singapore, you'll not be eligible for those grants. So if Hong Kong is your first market, just keep it simple and incorporate it. It's a very simple regime, simple tax practices, very easy, and there are a lot of small, small CPAs who can help you manage those administratively. You don't have to get the link at all. Uh, you or take 15 to 20,000 Hong Kong dollar and you're done for the auditing, accounting, everything possible. Fundraise, again, it comes with obligations. Irrespective, I think it, it means that you have to build trust. It's a two-way structure. If you're taking somebody's money, you have to go back to them, even if they are not engaged with you. Again, passive investor, active investor, right? Even passive investors giving you money, you might as well report to them at a regular frequency. Good news and the bad news, break them with them, they'll appreciate. They're not shy. If anybody who's invested in your company, they're not shy of hearing bad news. In fact, they'll appreciate. And sometimes, they will come back and give you a helping hand how to overcome that bad news or how they can help you. But again, choose very wisely. If you can do without funding, keep going without funding. But then only you will show traction, and only traction will help you raise more money. Uh, again, on a PowerPoint, very few people will give you money. Right? Not even your mother-in-law. <laughs> How much? Again, uh, whatever you measure, believe me, you will fall short. Nothing will go as per Excel spreadsheet. So if you think you need $200,000, be very sure that it has some buffer. If you raise $200 and you don't hit your milestone, then how do you raise the next $50,000? So keep some buffer in your hand 
but not a huge leg room. You don't need to travel business class, mm -hmm. right? Travel in bus, cut down taxis, don't eat. But McDonald's is a golden meal. Mm -hmm. And a cup of noodle is fantastic with your team at startups, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so be, be very careful with the money you raise, but also be sure that you can hit a milestone with it. Going live is a milestone. Showing a prototype and starting to sign up initial evangelist customers or trade partners is a milestone, right? Start thinking of that as a milestone. Again, this has been talked about. I don't like to use the word fools. I think they're angels. Uh, literally, they're putting their money at risk. But you have to show passion to them. If they don't see passion in you, none of them will come to you. And even your friends, I'll give you an example. I thought I've worked 20 years in the banking industry. I have at least 25 friends who are very close to me. So I sent a mail to hundreds of my friends saying, guys, I've jumped the ship. I'm going to start a peer-to-peer -peer lending marketplace in Hong Kong. Hottest topic in the world. Shouldn't I get 20 friends to give me money? Nah. They in fact stop picking your phone up. <laughs> right? Only the good ones don't even wait for the email. The moment they know you've changed status, they'll send you the money. So don't bank on them. Believe me, you really realize that very few of them are left and half that your calls will just go on answer. Oh, I was traveling. Sorry. I'm interested. Call me next week. You call them next week. Uh, just forget it. Family. Again, don't look for money. I think what you need is emotional support. You need them to have a buy-in. They need to go through the journey with you. You're going to work 18 to 20 hours a day. Sometimes you will never have a weekend. And uh, sometimes you'll sacrifice all the gourmet meals you had previously. Right? No whining, no dining. So don't look for money for them. Look for emotional support and, and help. Right? And surely, you can find angels. It's getting easier in Hong Kong. Uh, but don't limit yourself to Hong Kong. Go out and talk to people as much as possible overseas. Hong Kong has, has again experienced people are still looking for hard assets. If you have a property, people will give you. Uh, but again, don't go out for angels who are, don't understand your topic. Uh, again, don't go to an uh, angel investor who's asking for everyday details. Like, I'll give you my experience. I had one angel investor. He gave me a decent sum of money, but literally I got 20 SMSs from him every day. What, how is the meeting? If I, I literally had to sort of feel like I was obligated to report it to him every half an hour. And so I called him in for lunch and said, okay, this is not working. If I keep answering your SMSs, and then I see I get distracted also. So can we just keep the same thing which I spoke to you, that we'll speak once a week if you want, or once in 15 days, let's speak. But he was not happy and I had to just, I was carrying the check and I put it back, split it back and said, hey, let's close the deal, take your check back and that's how it work. He was very unhappy, but I think on the long run, we became friend, and he realizes that it was not for him. Uh, instruments. Again, business is very hard to value when you have pre-revenue. If you have got a plan record, you have done hundreds of trades, it's easy. But convertible note, and there's a structure called SAFE, which is very prevalent in the Silicon Valley, but starting to get traction in Hong Kong. So I raised all my money on convertible note structure, trying to convince people for a small investment of 20,000, 30,000 US dollars to value my company was very hard. Right? If you have a lead investor in Series A, he values and the rest follows. A convertible note, now people understand. Uh, people still don't like it. But it's the easiest structure. And then if you want to formalize that, be prepared to fork out anywhere between twenty to thirty thousand US dollars from a law firm here. Uh, again, while it's it's a very standard practice in US, here the lawyers take their chunk of fees just to make it formal. Uh, so be be careful of that uh, fees also. So if you have more and more people trusting you, you can sign on a piece of paper and save that money. Uh, again, some people like equity, but again, if you have one or two big investors, it's easier to issue equity. Valuation is easy. 
skin in the game. Most important. Uh, don't expect salary. If you pay me salary every month, you might as well go back to a corporate job. Uh, one of our commitment to uh, all our early investors was that no co-founder will take salary till we make this company go the way we want it to be. So we, we go live, we have initial traction. That's the first time we'll come back to them and say, hey, now can we take some small salary? Right? So all three co-founders have not taken any money. In fact, we keep putting money in as and when required uh, and go back to the engines. And there are, there are other ways to show skin. Again, don't do part-time, do full-time. You can't juggle two jobs. Your own job as an entrepreneur itself is sucking completely. Uh, you, you cannot imagine what all you have to do things from sweeping the floor when, before your staff comes in to going to an angel investor, going to a regulator, depending on what you're doing, and going out to events like this event. Uh, surely, it's not going to be a customer event for me, but it's always helpful to do these events because you never know what opens up from here. With or without money, move forward. If you sit there with the PowerPoint of an idea, you are a stick in the mud. If you cannot execute on your own plan with the slightest of money, nobody will ever believe it. I, I cannot imagine how things have become more affordable. Posting a website doesn't take millions of dollars anymore. Right? It just takes hundred dollars. Getting a company incorporated doesn't take millions of dollars anymore. Thousands of dollars. So just don't sit there, incorporate a company, hire your team, get a man, whatever, friends and family to start working with you. Even if you are working out of coffee shop, I worked almost for four months out of coffee shops just to save money. All my meetings used to be coffee shop and I want to say, if I ever become a unicorn, Starbucks will be mentioned there. <laughs> because I think I have collected Starbucks uh, uh, receipts from all the way to Shenmuan to Chaiwan. And sometimes in Kaolin inside also. So I have all the receipts on my wall of fame. So uh, just keep moving forward. That's the only way you will find people getting interested, people thinking that yes, you are executing. And that's what I did. When I raised money, even if people were not interested, I would say, okay, can I keep you in my mailing list? And I, these are my three milestones which I've achieved 30 day, 60 day, 90 day. And I would just send them on email, email every 30 days. And I saw people coming back and saying, yes, we have met, I'm seeing you making traction, can I still invest in your company? Right. That's how it is most of the time. Again, going back, every, every person in my team, every investor knew what the milestones were. We missed some, we hit some. But they were informed of the good news and the bad news every 30 to 45 days. And then we kept a personal relationship with each of them through calls. Not necessarily just after the email, but during the whole 45 days, I had a booster in my calendar to speak to one of them every uh, one of them in every 30, 45 days. Some of my investors are from US, some from Dubai, some back from India, and some from Hong Kong. So we have to manage those time zones and speak to all of them. Some of these resources I found very useful, uh, specifically the first one, uh, Founder Institute. ALA Piper has fantastic free resources. Go ahead and use them. Uh, employee contract, uh, convertible loan contracts, hundreds of contracts which are available to free to you. Uh, make your business plan, lifeplan.com, very simple uh, to use. Uh, if you're making your pitch deck, use Pitch Envy. A lot of good examples out there. You will even find for Square, a uh, lot of other companies out there which how their initial pitches look like. Uh, and start me at Hong Kong. Uh, do get in touch with uh, Charles or Simon if you haven't got in touch with them. They're a fantastic bunch of people. They're always very helpful. Very, very helpful people. They have various verticals within them. And uh, if nothing else, they open doors for you. Right? So but those were my points out here. Uh, keep rocking. Entrepreneurship is a wonderful world. Wonderful, wonderful world. It's not filled with silos. You will grow as a person even if you fail in your first entrepreneurship. You will learn, you will grow as a person, and you
to be mindfulness, which is growth. Uh, so I think don't worry whether you fail or succeed in your venture. As a human being, you will always grow with this experience. Congratulations once again. Keep talking.
know, they're typical. So, so what they say is check size. It's kind of the word they use. So although, well, to be honest, no one uses checks anymore you know, in, in this world, but, but, the, but they say this is our typical check size. You know, but it's usually like a typical early stage venture capital firm. It's two to three million dollars. A seed, a, a, a rich individual can put up to a million dollars, I am hearing. Uh, later stage funds, they call them like five to ten million dollars. And so you can see it on the website by talking to them. But, but but there is no hard and fast rule and they tend to make exceptions all the time. If, if, if they're really excited about a deal, then uh, they'll make an exception just because they want to get in. Uh, so I, I wouldn't, um, but, but, but a lot of that information is uh, publicly available. Um, how do you know if an investor is interested? Um, really interested? Well, you know, the, the, the way I like to describe it is have they displayed seriousness of intent? What does that mean? Have they actually asked you smart questions or just stupid general questions? Have they done research on the industry that, that, that you're in? Uh, there's a firm I invested in and this hedge fund came in and they said, hey, we've been monitoring your progress. We did this analysis on these 20 features which, which we think you're way competitor uh, way more competitive than all the other players in the market. It was this brilliant 20-page document of very detailed. So obviously they're interested, right? And so, 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 so usually you can tell. Um, but if someone isn't asking smart questions, or if they don't return calls, or stuff like that, you know, then clearly they have not displayed any seriousness of intent, and it's really on behavior. Um, so the way I look at it is, most people aren't interested. Is like your starting point. And if someone really is interested, you can just tell through you know, how some of these things, and, and I, I like to gauge it seriously in the tent. Um, how much of the company do you give up? Well, as little as possible, right, is great, right? Mm -hmm. um, but usually what we see is a venture capital firm will want to have anywhere between 15 to 25% of a company, regardless of how much money they put in, you know, whether it's $3 million or $6 million. Um, and angels tend to want, you know, angels as a group, because it's, it's more than one, and it's anywhere between like a few points to maybe 5%. So points means percentage points, which is another secret word that, that, that people say in the industry. So, but, but, but it really depends, I mean, but usually for early stage companies, you know, there, there are certain, you know, ranges. Yeah, one. Um, I think Invest Hong Kong actually encouraged teams from up overseas to Hong Kong. So maybe you can have to come and see if you're a business beyond this one. I think it's Sarah Code. I'm not a PR here. So Sarah Code funded me uh, as part of the incubation program, gave me an office. And now for the co founders are also PR. So it's, I don't think that that's a restriction. It's a pretty much a, a talent market. You can convince the judges, uh, and you will only get a couple of minutes there. So it's a little bit of uh, luck also. And if they are looking for that kind of a program, and they don't have that in their portfolio, you can make it. So do some research before you go into any of these uh, things. And uh, one way to also spot uh, people who are not interested is when they ask you at a very early stage, specifically when you're an idea stage or an early build out. And they ask it for a five-year PNL. <laughs> Just, I think that's another way to understand that you're going to be wasting all of your time putting the five-year PNL. Because nothing will go as for that PNL. Right? That means he's not a regular investor. Other question to ask them is, what kind of investment have they done? If they're angel serious investors, and what ticket size have they done? So I would be very excited initially and go for every coffee meeting and buy coffee, pastries, everything. And then I realized I was wasting a lot of time raising money. Then I would say, can we do a quick uh, phone call and ask them four or five questions. What is their interest? Have you understood about peer to peer lending? And if they, most of the answers are very dull, I would sort of say, okay, let's, I'll send you some material if you're interested, and let's then call me back. And typically, they would just follow up. Did we answer everybody's question you asked in the first round? Uh, second round of questions. Who has more questions you'd like to ask? 
Yeah. So if you're an entrepreneur and you're focused on your business first, you're short of resources, and you're doing a lot to operate and like grow the turnover, which is vital. The moment you raise funds, if it's your first time, how do you? Um, so how many people do you need? And you're gonna. You said that you're gonna spend full time on raising funds, right? How long does it take? And um, also, how do you? Do you need to find a mentor that helps you to know where to go, how to do it? Because I have no clue how to, I've not done it yet, so I still need to run the company and I need to do this job. Should I find a mentor and how do I find a mentor? Um, or someone? So it feels like a full time. So I actually, because we have a very small team and I, I drive the operations and the marketing. So I've actually never not worked on the business on any day. But when I was like pitching, doing tech, like doing the business plan, going out to talk, it took up like the majority of my time. So I just had to make up the lost time in off hours. Um, you know, I was sleeping three or four hours a day, that's what I um, but 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 um, one approach that I, I mean that I've seen is to actually just do all the try to do all the meetings within like two weeks and get more involved and uh, and just go and go speak with people and just kinda of get those meetings done. Um, and then get back to business. But um, yeah, there's just but usually it takes a long time before they, they can come back to you and confirm. So it's an ongoing process. So I cannot really recommend like how much time it's gonna take before you do this, but um, let me just uh, it's focus like put a week or two. I've done I've done that early on when I was just getting everything together, just within a week or two I got all the meetings uh, set up together and just got all the material ready. Um, I was still working on a business but I didn't have a social And then just that I, I talked to everybody I needed to talk to. I got all the materials that can be used, like basically, forever for other meetings, for the same round anyway. Um, just, just, just do that. Let's see what happens. Um, mentors, very important, but they're good. Extremely important. Uh, with the Blueprint uh, and CCAM, um, they have helped me tremendously. I've been introduced to investors, huge investors. Uh, uh, in, 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 you know, from London, in Hong Kong, um, they've invested in projects around the world. Uh, so it's, it's good to have your network. At the end of the day, they need to like, like you need to this, this people business like this. Like, it's important to know what to go in. If they like you, they'll like to have more conversation with you. So, so have a, having a good group. But group is very tech oriented. Uh, was it was to be tech. And that's what too, actually. Yeah, I mean, the whole world is tech yeah, if, you're really opening up a, so if you're not in tech. If you're <laughs> opening up a wine shop, uh, venture capital is not the way to go. See, you will not get money from that. What is your business? Uh, it's a design uh, agent and wholesaler, and we're entering into retail with a beautiful franchise. Um, yeah, maybe, I mean, there are traditional investors, but maybe you might have to look even in that industry. The only formula is 9 to 5 focus on your customers because your customers won't meet you at 9.30 in the night. Your angel investors will meet you at 7.30 if they're keen and they'll meet you for dinner or drink at 9.30. So focus all your time because traction is the only thing. Once you have traction, people will be talking to you rather than you talking to them. Specific to the fundraising process, could each of you talk about a mistake you've made along the way and what you learned from it? And then, if you've made a mistake. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Mistakes, and then you had a question as well. Uh, okay. Any other questions? 